The ram's only gonna go one way, so make sure you have the correct pin alignment. Then just gently line everything up and then press it in place. You'll hear it click and snap. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the ASUS ROG Strix B550i gaming motherboard. I did purchase this product myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the nice retail box and packaging right here walking us through all of the product tech specs and key features. You also may notice a sticker on the front letting us know that this supports Ryzen 5000 series desktop CPUs as well. And then we have our marking on the packaging letting us know that this supports third gen AMD Ryzen desktop CPUs. But it's nice that they went ahead and they put that sticker on the box as well so we know it's ready right out of the box for the 5000 series. We can learn more on the backside about this product and its special features. So it's got audio USB type C, Intel Wi-Fi 6, BIOS flashback, which is important if you are using a next gen CPU and a USB 3.2 gen two front panel connector. And this is PCIe 4.0 ready as well. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the package contents. First up, you can see we have some stickers and product literature. We also have a DVD version and a physical copy of our user guide and manual. Next, you can see all of our cables and hardware right here that we have for us. A lot of screws, standoff brackets, that sort of thing. Also notable, we have a USB type C to audio connector right there. Then you can see we have our faceplate as well for the IO, a nice IO shield. And last but not least, you can see we have the motherboard itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. Here's a look at the board up close, check it out. You can see very small and compact, two dim slots, our CPU socket. We have our M.2 heatsink underneath this is where we can install one M.2 drive. You can see our PC 4.0 slot right here. You can see our main power connector, USB Type-C, USB 3.0. You can identify everything right here. Very simple, straightforward. You can always reference the user guide and manual as well. Let's flip it over to the back side so you can see the back right here. We also have another M.2 drive slot on the back, which is great if you want to expand your storage. And then we can see it from this side, this side, and then we have our back IO right here, USB Type-C audio, our audio connectors, Wi-Fi. You can see our USB ports, BIOS flashback, HDMI, and display port right there. Now let's go ahead, let's get this installed. So the first thing we're gonna do is prep our motherboard and get it all set up and ready to go. So we're gonna install the M.2 drive, our CPU, our RAM, and our bracket for our cooler. So let's go ahead, let's do that right now. So to get the M.2 drive installed, we need to remove the heat sink. So let's go ahead, let's just gently remove it right here. So we have two screws to take off. There's the first one. Here's the second one. And now you can see we have the heat sink removed and we have our thermal pad on there. Now we're ready to go ahead and take our drive, make sure everything's lined up and then we're gonna install it right in place. So you can see we already have a screw ready for us or your drive will come with one you can use. And if you need to reposition that standoff bracket, feel free to do that. But you basically just line it up at a 45 degree angle and then you press it in place and you can see we're gonna have to just gently Press it back down to get it installed on our motherboard. Depending on the board that you're using, you may have multiple slots. And you can see on this particular board, we can actually add another drive right here on the back side. And you can see we have spots for our standoff brackets again. So now we just need to go ahead and put the heatsink cover back on. So you can see we got the heat sink tightened down again and now our M.2 drive has successfully been installed. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the CPU installed. So we're gonna take this lever right here, we're gonna pull it up and now we're ready to take our CPU and we're gonna look for that gold corner right there and we're gonna match it onto the board where this little triangle is. So that's what we're gonna do to gently put it in place. So you'll see it'll just drop right in. You won't have to force anything and just line up that triangle with the little triangle in the corner right there. And then we just gently press it back down. And now you can see we have our CPU 
installed. Now we're gonna prep the board by removing the default bracket right here. So you can see what we have installed on this board and what we're gonna put there instead. So let's go ahead, let's do that right now. We're gonna take our Phillips head screwdriver and just remove those four screws. So now you can see what it looks like with the default AMD bracket removed right here. And you can see we have our coolers bracket. We're just gonna slide that right up in place and you can see it's a perfect fit. So now when it's time to install the cooler, we'll be able to do that very easily. Now we're ready to install our RAM. You can see we have two slots here. The RAM's only gonna go one way, so make sure you have the correct pin alignment. Then just gently line everything up and then press it in place. You'll hear it click and snap. So there we go. We got the first one installed. Now we'll do the exact same thing again with the other channel. Line it up, gently press in place. You can see, there we go, it just clicked right in. And now the RAM has been installed. Now we're ready to install the cooler. So go ahead, you can see, we already have pre-applied thermal paste with this cooler, which is nice. And we're ready just to drop it right in. So again, we put the bracket there. You can see it's only gonna go one way. So if you try to do it this way, you'll notice, hey, those screws aren't gonna line up. So we can only do it one way. And then make sure at this stage for your cable management, I would recommend doing it with the cables as close over here as possible. So you can see that's how we're going to drop it up to line it in place. So that's what we're going to do right here. We're just going to go ahead, gently put it on, run those cables just like so. So just line it up, rest the screws in place, just like you see here on the bracket. And now take a Phillips head screwdriver and tighten all four of them down in place. So here we go. You can see what the cooler looks like fully installed at this step two. When you're tightening the four screws in place, be sure just to give each one a quarter of a turn or so and rotate before you just tighten one all the way down, be sure to just spend some time giving each one a couple of turns as you move around and then you can tighten them all down. Don't just tighten one all the way down and move on to the next one. Spread out your tightening and make sure that it's all going down flush together. Also, now you're ready to plug in your CPU fan, which you can see we did that right there. I'm gonna leave the RGB unplugged right now because we'll be connecting more RGB to our header right there and we'll be using a splitter cable. But there you go, you can see we have the cooler successfully installed. So now it's time to get the motherboard installed. You can see we have our IO shield already snapped in place on the back of the case. You just bring it in right here, line it up and gently press it in. Now we're ready to drop the motherboard in. So you can see we have four standoff brackets. You may need to pull these out of the way to give you enough space and just gently line everything up so the Wi-Fi antennas can come in, the USBs, everything we have back there. There we go. Now you should see that it's fully seated and we're ready to fasten it in place with four screws. So you should have 12 of these screws included in your kit and then we'll just drop them right in place and tighten them down. So now you can see we have successfully installed the motherboard and fastened it down. Now we're ready to plug in the rest of our cables right here. So you can see we have our HD audio. That's gonna go right here under this cover we may need to remove with the Phillips head screwdriver. Then you can see we have our front panel connector. That's going to drop down right in here and get plugged in. Page 1-18 in the user guide manual is going to walk you through the correct setup for that. And I do want to point out they have this nice cover on there keeping everything together for us. Then you can see we have USB 3.0 for our front panel. That's going to go right in here. And pay attention to how this notch is lined up. It's only going to fit one way. So you can see that's our front panel connectors. And then everything else we have to connect is gonna be our fans and our RGB. So here's a close up of all the connectors right here. So in the end, I did have to undo that screw to connect the HD audio. Then you can see going further along, we have our USB 3.0 right there. Then we have our front panel connector just pushed right down in place, really nice. Main power supply. You can see over here, first up we have our five pin splitter for our RGB. Then you can see we have our chassis fan, which is gonna have an adapter for us so we can attach both fans to this motherboard. Then you can see where our CPU fans installed. And lastly, we have our connector right here for our CPU power from our power supply. So that's a quick close up look of all the connections on this board. Keep in mind there's USB type C if you have that connection for your build, if you're using this motherboard. And then you can see we have our USB 2.0 connection right there as well. So there we go. That's just a quick look at all the connection options on this board that we used in this build. So here's a look at the final build with our cables managed. You may have noticed too, our CPU power cable now is routed behind and underneath the motherboard. 
Everything else is just tucked away nicely, zip tied together. Most of it I was able to get bailed out, I feel like, between the two fans. So everything's nice and snug under there, zip tied together. Really happy with how everything turned out with this build in regards to cable management. I wish I could make this a little bit prettier. Not sure in the future if I got like a longer extension cable, I could maybe run it that way and that might look a little bit better. And unfortunately with this board, the HD audio, there just really wasn't much I was able to work with there. And I still wanted to keep this slot open in case we ever want to add a GPU to this build. But let's go ahead, let's shine a light into. You can see how everything looks in there. Get a feel for how everything kind of came together with this build. But overall, very pleased and impressed with this case and what we we're able to fit inside and how much room we still have. So now the PC's built, we can look at the motherboard bio settings. So here we go, check it out. You can see the different tabs that we have. I'm gonna browse through them all. We also have some other options up at the top. You can see if we did F6, F4, F3. And then we have our hardware monitor on the right side of the screen. So right above me, you can see our CPU temp, our memory. Also, you may notice on our memory frequency right here, I did just change it to 3200 megahertz, but we haven't saved those settings yet. So some quick favorites right here. Then we can go over to the main tab and we'll just cycle through everything. So you can see those options. AI tweaker. Get a feel for everything that you can tweak and change as you see fit. I'm not gonna mess with anything besides the memory frequency. AMD overclocking, you can see at the bottom here, a ton of system configuration settings. Then we have our monitor. You can see our fan speeds right there. Temperature as well. Then we have our boot settings, a lot of options there. And then we have some built-in tools, depending on your needs from ASUS, which is nice. And there's Armory Crate. You can see that right there. Then we have our exit, so we can save all of our changes. Well, that's a quick look at this motherboard's BIO settings. So overall, I've had a great experience building with this motherboard. There are a couple things I wanna point out. One, I really enjoy ASUS products and their motherboards are fantastic, really easy to use. Two, I appreciate this motherboard having BIOS flashback on it. I did have to utilize that for my 5600G. I updated to the most recent BIOS at the time of this video and everything worked great. Now, with that being said, there are a couple things I'd wanna change in this motherboard going forward. The first one, at least in regards to this particular case, so it's not necessarily their fault of the motherboard, but where the HD audio um, header is, it just didn't allow for the best cable management. So that kind of bummed me out a little bit there. And two, I'd love to have an additional fan header on this board. We do have one up top, and I did use a splitter and that was fine, but it'd be great to have one more option on this board as well. But overall, very pleased with it. It's small and compact, but it's got USB 3.0, USB-C. It's got a lot of good stuff going for it, and we have plenty of room for our RGB as well on there. So very pleased with this board. Overall, I got a lot of good things to say about it. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.